In this video, you'll learn the fundamentals of DAX in just 10 minutes. And we'll cover eight formulas from simple DAX functions like in sum, all the way to more complex functions with several rows. So let's get into it. So here's the data set that we'll be working with, which you can download for free in the video description. And let's suppose that we're working for a distribution company that sells beverage brands. So we've got all kinds of geographical information alongside their financials to the side. Now that we have this set up, let's get started working with DAX, which stands for Data Analysis Expressions, and it's basically formulas inside Power BI. Going into the report view for our basic analysis, and let's suppose that first we would like to know what our total revenue is. And for that, we're gonna go up over here to create our first DAX expression when we click on New Measure. That's gonna activate this type of formula bar, and we're gonna name this Total Revenue and that's gonna be equals to the sum of the revenue for that whole column. So we're gonna go sum, just hit enter there when you find it. And what we're gonna wanna select is within the data sheet, which is the only sheet that we have, we want to select the revenue. We're gonna close that parenthesis and hit enter there. You'll notice that it's not like a number actually shows up here. What we actually need to do is first select something like the matrix. So just click on that. And let me just move it over here to the side. And now we have this new column over here that's called total revenue. So we can just drag and drop it in. This is how we'll be able to see what the actual figure is. And in case you want to edit it, you can just click on that and you'll find that the formula is back up over here. As you can probably imagine, functions like a max, a minimum, or an average work in the same way. Next up in number two, let's suppose that we want to find out how many unique brands that we sell. So for this, what we're gonna do is hit on new measure again. And this time around, it, let's say we call it unique brands. We'll go equals. And the formula that we'll use is called distinct count. So it's gonna be this third one over here. Just hit enter when you find it. And what we wanna select is gonna be the beverage brands. We can close that parenthesis and hit enter. That's gonna create that new measure down over here. Now, if somebody sees this, they might not quite understand what it means. So what we can do here is actually add some commentary by going to shift enter. That's gonna add a second row for us. And then what we're gonna do is type this forward dash twice, which is basically gonna say that, hey, this isn't a formula. We actually just wanna write a comment. And here we could say something like, these are the unique brands we sell. And so it's not gonna affect the formula at all. It's just a comment there. And so when we drag the unique brands and drag it over to the matrix, you'll see that we're, we're currently selling six unique brands. Next up in number three, let's take it up a level and create two functions within one measure. For example, we, we could want to find the profit, which is going to be our revenue minus our expenses. So for this, we're gonna hit on new measure and the measure name is gonna be our profit equals and that's going to be equals to the sum of our revenue which if you recall is actually going to be the same thing as our total revenue but for this purpose i'm just going to show it like this we're going to close a parenthesis and then we're going to do minus the sum and in this case it's going to be our expenses so this one right over here close the parenthesis and hit enter there so that's our total profit let me just drag and drop it so we can see what that's looking like and it's about 6 million. Once we have the profit and the revenue, we can calculate the profit margin, which is going to be the profit divided by the revenue. So for this, we can hit on new measure, but you might think of just doing one divided by the other, but the problem is that if there is a div divided by zero error, meaning that maybe you don't have any revenue, and so there you would get an error sign. So what we want to do there is actually use the divide function to work around it. So first, let's rename this to profit margin, margin percentage, and let's do the divide function here, hit enter. And so this is gonna allow us to select the numerator, which for us is gonna be the profit, hit enter there, comma, and the denominator is gonna be the revenue, hit enter there, comma, and the alternate result, this is basically an, if there is an error, then what would you like to put? This case, if we just leave it blank, it's not gonna put anything which is good by us. So we're gonna close the parenthesis and hit enter. Awesome, we now have the profit margin. So let's drag and drop that. And if we scroll over, you can see that that's at 79%. And 
And speaking of numbers, do you wish you could get more Google traffic on your website? If that is the case, one of the essential things to understand is what you need to fix on your site. For this, you can either hire a consultancy or an agency, or an awesome free alternative is to get a professional website audit from Ahrefs Webmaster Tools, which is kindly sponsoring this video. This free resource will audit your website and help you prioritize optimization opportunities on your site to get more Google traffic. From analyzing your SEO health and backlinks to understanding which keywords your pages are ranking for, Ahrefs Webmaster Tools gives you the resources to boost your Google traffic. And this isn't a seven day free trial or anything like that, it's just completely free. So if you're interested in giving Ahrefs Webmaster Tools a shot, check out the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. So far, we've been looking at measures, but there's also what's known as calculated columns. And these make sense if you want to evaluate each row as opposed to finding the total, which is what we've been doing so far with measures. So let's take a look over here. We're gonna head over to the data view. Here, let's suppose that we want to join the state and the region, so put them together into one column. For this, we can head to table tools, and a measure is no longer going to work because we want an entirely new column. So we're gonna click on new column instead to create the calculated column. Here, we're gonna call this say region and state. And what we're gonna wanna use is first just select the region. So we're just gonna type region. Once you find that, just hit enter. And then we're gonna use the ampersand. This is basically gonna allow us to link it with the, the state. So ampersand and then in quotations, we're simply gonna leave a space. So there's a bit of separation between the region and the state. And secondly, let's select the ampersand again and select the state. Hit enter, that should be linking it together. So we're just gonna hit enter again. And you can see right now that we have the region and the state, and you can see there's that space in between them. As you can probably imagine, we could have done the same thing for calculating the profit or the profit margin. The only downside here is that it creates a new column and so it's a lot more data than creating a new measure. Next up in number six, we'll move on to some more complex formulas. So let's suppose that we want to categorize these into small or large shipments, depending on the unit sold. So let's say that if it's less than 5,000, then it's a small shipment, or if it's greater than 5,000, then it's a large shipment. So what we can do here is table tools, and we'll create a new column again. Let's label this something like category equals, and we're gonna use the if formula here, hit enter. And the logical test is going to be that the units sold, hit enter there, are less than 5,000, comma. Now, if that is the case, then we wanna call this small. So we're gonna have to put it in quotations, close the quotations, comma. And then if that is, isn't the case, then it's gonna be large, right? Close the quotations there, and we'll close the parenthesis. So to recap here, hey, if this is less than 5,000, then it should be small, and if not, it should be large. And we'll hit enter there. And now we can quickly check this. So large would be greater than 5,000, and this seems to be the case. And then the small would be if it's less than 5,000, and that seems to be right. And number seven, what if we take it up another level, and this time we want three categories, so a small, a medium, and a large. The medium is gonna be from 5,000 to 10,000. From 10,000 on, it's all large. So for this, we're gonna actually have to put an if inside of this if. So towards the end of the formula, right here before large starts, we're gonna put a second if. This time, it's gonna say that the units sold, hit enter there, are gonna be less than 10,000, comma, and if that is true, so basically between 5,000 and 10,000, those are going to be the medium sized. Hit the comma key there, and then if that isn't the case, if they're above 10,000, in other words, they're gonna be large. So to check if this works, let's just hit enter and make sure. So you can see right here that we've got a medium, that's because it's at 9,000, which makes sense. Same thing over here, and the large is greater than 10,000. And finally, towards the bottom, we have the small, which as you can see, is less than 5,000. And finally, in number eight, what if we wanna find out the revenue specifically for Sprite? 
So basically, we're gonna use the calculate function, which is gonna allow us to calculate using a filter. So let's go back over to the report view. We're gonna create a new measure for this. And let's call this something like sprite revenue. And it's gonna be equals to the calculate function, like I mentioned, hit enter there. And the expression for us is going to be the total revenue, which is actually a measure we created earlier. So the sum of all of the revenue comma and then the filter is going to be that the bread beverage brand so the beverage brand over here has to be equals to and in quotations we'll put sprite close the quotations close the parenthesis and we'll hit enter now that we have that let me drag and drop it into the matrix so we can see and you can see that we have a sprite revenue over here filtered out out of the total revenue at 1.1 million now, what if we want to see the revenue for two beverage brands, like maybe Sprite and Fanta? So for that, we could go back to the formula. So going back to Sprite revenue, just click on that and you'll see it activate. Let's call this now Sprite and Fanta. Revenue. And what we're going to want is the same formula. That's all fine. But we're going to want right here an OR. So we're going to put OR. Hit enter there. And so first, it's going to be that it's Sprite. And if it isn't Sprite, comma, we're gonna want the beverage brand. Hit enter there to be equals to, in quotations, we'll put Fanta. So those are the two that it's gonna be filtering by. We'll close the brackets and then close the brackets again and hit enter. So you can see right now that number is increased because it's accounting for both Sprite and Fanta. Now that you've learned how to make functions in Power BI, to visualize them, check out this video over here or take our Power BI course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.